Hey friends, Cosplay Gal here. Um, today's video is going to be a little different. I think I've been doing a lot of get ready with me's um, for obvious reasons. It's part of my um, Patreon subscription. Um, but I also was thinking about like other things that we could do together that kind of encapsulate what you do um, when you cosplay, right? So um, for today's video, I think I wanted to share with you all kind of like um, almost like an unboxing, if you will, of my new circle lenses. So as y'all probably know, you can cosplay however you want. If you prefer to cosplay with your natural eye color, fantastic. If you prefer to do characters where you sort of use makeup to mimic the eye when you close it, awesome. Or if you're anything like me and you're blind as a bat and you kind of have to use contacts, you might invest in something called circle lenses. So circle lenses are just a form of colored contacts that typically are going to be bigger in diameter so that they provide an enlarging effect. Um, obviously a lot of us who are cosplaying characters who are anime characters, uh, traditional anime style drawings tend to have those large eyes, but you can also see them too, I think, in like traditional cartoons um, from America. Um, and it also is just up to you. If you really love a character and you want to have big doll eyes or you want to sort of exaggerate an aspect of a character's eyes, I think circle lenses are an excellent way to do that. So I just want to preface this by saying that um, even if you don't have a prescription like I do and you have perfectly fantastic 2020 vision, I still recommend that you speak to your eye doctor before you purchase any circle lenses from any of the online retailers. Um, just to be safe, you need to make sure that it's not going to do damage to your eye. Okay, there are definitely ways that you take care of circle lenses and that you apply circle lenses um, that are going to be protective. So um, we will get started. I've got four pairs that just came in the mail. Um, some of them are for very specific characters that I am working on this summer. Um, and uh, I think two of them were just kind of random because I thought that they were really cool. So uh, we will go ahead and get started. Um, just as an update, um, I did get my contacts from an online retailer called Pinky Paradise, but I've been using them for years. And when I first started using them, and even now, I will be very careful about how I use them. I usually do like a 30 minutes to an hour sort of test run to make sure that there is no um, sort of burning sensation or any other sensation that might indicate that these are not wearable, okay? All right, so I have got my Q-tip, uh, just because sometimes they do tend to get stuck in the bottle. Um, so we will go ahead and get started. So right now I will be trying on a pair of gray contact lenses. Um, and just as a forewarning, I will be touching my eyes. So if you don't like that, you feel like that is probably the grossest thing you've ever heard. Um, please feel free to not watch this video. Um, so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. I've already washed my hands. That's what we got to do. And I'm washing them between each, um, each one. Um, I've got like a little, little hand washing station underneath my desk. Um, but what I do is the, the, the very traditional way. So there are ways to do it with like the suction cup. I don't like that. I tend to back to the perfectionism we've talked about before. I have to have control. And so for me, I like to be able to do it myself. So I'm going to walk y'all through how to do this. So I will gently brace my thumb underneath my eye and then pull up my eyelid using the um, index finger, but I'm doing it very gently. I mean, honestly, I'm mostly touching my eyelashes right now. And so you're going to want to balance this on the lens on your finger. I like to use my middle finger to, to place it in just because it's not as strong as the index finger. So I'm less likely to like poke myself in the eye. And 
and I like to look away from the contact. Oh, wow. Okay. So I recognize I'm only wearing one right now. Um, so let me hurry up and put the other one in. But if y'all saw, I look away from the contact because I think um, I am not strong enough <laughs> to be able to look straight on as I put an object in my eye. So, um, and keep in mind too, I am, I've got my solution here. Um, and I just sort of like wash it with the solution since it has traveled so far to get to me. Um, same, same thing, looking away and then I'm rubbing it a little bit cause I felt it bend. Oop, one more time. There it is. Oh, okay. So I'm not gonna spoil anything for y'all, but this, these eyes are specifically chosen for a character that has great eyes. Um, I'm really excited. I think it looks really good. Um, but do you notice though how intense just the fact of like the shape of the eye, the color of the eye can change your face? I, I'm also kind of wearing gray, so I think I'm matching a little bit, but if you notice like how different I look and all I did was just change the contacts. Um, obviously, if we're gonna go in when we do our characters with like more intentional makeup, um, <laughs> which y'all know I'm not the best at, um, but there are ways, even like the way you do your eyeliner that can change the shape of your eye as well, so. I like these a lot. All right, so removal time. Um, I am, same thing, right? The way that we open it, I use my middle finger. I'm placing it gently on top and I move my eye away. So again, here, I'll show you in a second, hold on. Again, in, away, and then a gentle pinch. Touch. You got to be careful though with the way that you pinch it um, because it is 100% possible to rip them and that would be a shame um, because once they're ripped they cannot go back in the eye. I promise you. Um, not that I've done it on purpose before but I've definitely ripped contacts while they were still in my eye and it's probably the worst pain that I've ever felt in my life. Um, not even being a weenie hut general. It just, it, it's really painful. So um, I do not recommend. All right, so up next, we've got our peach color pecan. This is, this one was like less uh, specific towards a character. So if you notice, like I said before, I am, um, I can be very intentional with how I purchase the things that I would like to purchase for my costumes. Um, if there is a very specific um, character in mind, I will oftentimes purchase things for that character. Um, but I'm also a woman on a budget. And so what I like to do is either have almost like a collection of characters that share similar traits, like eye color, for instance, um, or I will get like, I will do more of a casual cosplay and use my own clothing, or I will get like characters that have multiple aspects of their costume that can then be interchanged. Um, so those are obviously like talking about those characters that I like to wear the historical garments. So like only having really one crinoline, only one, having one like bustle underskirt just to like poof out the dress um and then sharing that because continuing to purchase is wasteful but also very expensive um so i'm kind of excited about how these are gonna look <sighs> so i'm not sure how i feel about this um definitely let me know what y'all think maybe there's a character that these could fit for so I thought these were gonna be redder 
than they turned out to be. And honestly, it could be because my eyes are so dark. Um, having very beautiful brown eyes can be an issue sometimes with contacts. That is another thing I think to keep in mind. The darker your eyes, sometimes the harder the color will show through because the backdrop for the color, your actual like iris color, um, they can tend to um, sort of obscure it or even change the color altogether because now it's brown with red on top of it, which as you can see is this like burgundy color. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take these off really quickly. Again, same thing that I've talked about, just washing my hands really quickly. Um, I do think I struggle sometimes with the pinching um, because I try to do it very, very gently. And what ends up happening is sometimes it doesn't catch. And so I will every now and then pinch my actual eyeball, which let me tell you, I don't recommend that. It is a very weird feeling. Um, kind of reminds me of the time I, um, I had to dissect a cow's eye in uh, high school biology. Never again. Um, but that was kind of like a good example of what it feels like. All right, so now I'm actually really excited for this color. Um, this is, I'm sure y'all could probably guess what character this might be for. Um, But kind of going back to what I was saying um, about how I will be very intentional with the kinds of um, products that I'm purchasing, just in terms of like being savvy about it, especially with colored contacts, you have to know you cannot keep these forever. Most colored contacts are going to last you about a year, but that's truly only if you take care of them. Um, if you're not taking care of your colored contacts, so you're like, for example, leaving it in the case without changing the solution, even if you haven't been wearing it, because that solution will get stale after a while. Um, another sort of example of this would be like, um, like not cleaning them, especially like as you handle them. You see, I was touching all over with my hands. Wow. Okay. So an example for this one is if you can see from where the color is on the lens sometimes the colors on the lenses are um, farther towards the edge because obviously the color cannot be in the middle because your pupil needs to be able to see out of it obviously with exception to like white sclera lenses or something um, or other lenses that are meant to like obscure the pupil um, but if you notice, this one, you can still see my brown eyes, which I wasn't, I wasn't banking on. So I'm a little disappointed. Um, but perhaps if my pupils dilate, this could work. <laughs> I would just look like I have really large pupils and blue eyes. Um, cause right now, if you see like my pupils are very small, but you can also see a lot of the brown. Mm, I don't know how I feel. Okay, we're almost done. Um, thank you so much for like bearing with me um, as I try on these contacts. Actually, you know what? No, it's growing on me. It, and it'll look different when I have the wig on. Obviously in my like everyday outfit and everyday hair, it, it's a little strange. Um, I'm, not gonna sh I'm not gonna write it off just now. I'm not gonna. Okay. Um, and I guess like just as like, just as a fun update, I did want to update y'all for like the summer. Um, I am very excited because I'm going to have a lot more free time during the summer, at least for the months of July and August. Um, and so I'm planning on doing more costumes, more cos tests, because obviously like doing an entire cosplay is not always feasible just because it, it is expensive. Um, Hence why I do have like my Patreon and I have 
like my Amazon wish list. It's not ever going to be me demanding or like withholding content or anything like that. Um, if you feel so moved to support me, um, then you're amazing and I, and I'm very appreciative of you. Um, but if you also don't, that's okay too. But there are options so that I can continue with this. And obviously the more support I can get, the more actual full cosplays I can do. Um, but I'll never stop. I actually do and have been planning on being the, um, oh, what's it called? Um, like, you know, when you go to a convention and there are some characters that are just like naturally older, like Corella is kind of an older character typically. I mean, obviously the new, the new movie, she's a lot younger, but she's typically portrayed as like older. Um, and then we have obviously, um, Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle when, um, when she is older, uh, when she gets turned into an old crone, um, and then other characters like that. And I know, I remember just seeing like the coolest, best versions of those are when people who are much older cosplay them. Um, and so I was already planning to just cosplay forever. <laughs> um, Hmm. I'm not actually even sure what color these are supposed to be. What do you all think? Hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, these are, oh, actually. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So if you notice, I'm going to like look right into the camera. If you notice, they're actually meant to be two different colors. I kind of wish that they were um, more drastically different. I think these are both from the Geo collection, um, which I do like because they're very soft colors, very earth, obviously earth toned. Um, but I think one is supposed to be green and one is supposed to be blue. <laughs> um, we'll see. Um, it's fine. Um, so just sort of, um, like reiterating what I'm attempting to say here is that summer is going to be awesome because I'm going to have way more free time, which means I'm going to be able to like lean into my cosplay, um, even more. And I'm going to do more cause tests and stuff too. And, and my goal is to really just connect with y'all. Like what characters are y'all feeling? What characters do you want to see? Or even more specifically, what style choices of characters would you like to see? Because it's very clear, and I think you all know, that I am very much uh, always going to lean into like semi-quasi-historical um, and like very femme fatale type characters. So that might include steampunk. It might also include uh, like traditional femme fatale characters um and every now and then it'll be a very badass character um for instance if you couldn't guess and i will spoil this um the bright bright blue ones are meant to be for celine from underworld which was my favorite movie when i was a kid uh or one of them anyway um i just love a very strong badass female protagonist um who's also beautiful, right? That goes back to ownership of sexuality. Like I am not an object. Um, if, you know, if people have opinions about what I look like, that's great. But like what really matters is how I feel about my body and how I demonstrate that. Um, and so obviously I will always go for characters that are leaned into their sexuality in a way that says, I am okay with this. I am, I am a woman, I am curvaceous, I am fill in the blank. Um, so yeah, so that's always going to be me. Um, but if y'all have any questions, y'all have any concerns, you have any thoughts, please feel free to share them because the whole point of me starting this and doing this was to connect, um, the pandemic. I mean, I know y'all have heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. The pandemic was horrible. The isolation, the fear, especially around like illness and, and people who didn't survive, I think what matters the most and what has always mattered to me has always been community 
and connection. And I think that this is just another way of me attempting to do that while also engaging in some radical self-care by changing myself into characters that I embody or wish to embody. So anyway, it was super fun to do this like unboxing thing with everyone. And uh, I, hope to, I hope to hear from y'all soon. All right, bye.